Christiana Urbano. I'm here with the Public Library of Brookline's Idea Space Craft Along Program. And this week we have an extra special craft along program for everyone. We're here with a whole bunch of really awesome guests from around Brookline to talk about how they have been making cotton face masks for different people in the community and also to learn from them how to make a really easy sew mask. So if you've never sewn before, this is actually a great project to start with. You'll just need a hand needle, just any old needle. The little ones that come in your like quick repair kits are totally fine. Some kind of thread. So I have just this embroidery thread that I have lying around. Some fabric. I have uh, cotton fabric that I have left over from a project, but you could also use a 100% cotton t-shirt and that would work as well. And you'll just need around a 12 by 18 inch piece. Um, probably end up a little bit smaller than that once you cut it down to fit your face, but that's about what you wanna start with. Um, and you could cut that out of a t-shirt as well. You'll want a ruler to measure that out and a marker to mark that out so you can cut it. Some kind of scissors that you can use to cut it down. Some hair ties that are gonna become the loops for your ears, but you can also use shoelaces or ribbon, anything washable. And then either pins, like sewing pins, or I just have some paper clips today, and that's gonna work too. Um, so while you're gathering those things, um, I'm going to introduce all of our super awesome guests today. So to start, we have Hadassah, who's here with us from Got Masks, Massachusetts, which is a really awesome mask um, sharing site. So she's going to tell us more about that in just a couple minutes. Um, but she also has worked, she also started the Welcome Blanket Brookline program, um, which is really cool. And she also gets to tell us about that. Along with her also from the Welcome Blanket Brookline program um, is Kathy, who is, has been doing hand sewn masks for people in her community. Uh, Priscilla, who's kind of a beginner sewer, um, but has gotten to learn a whole bunch about sewing and making masks for folks in the Brookline community and has used it kind of as a learning opportunity. And Jewel, who has been working through her quilting stash, making masks for different folks. Um, and they're all here, as well as Joyce from the Brookline Bees. And she's an instructor there. It's a quilting and sewing group at the Brookline Senior Center. And she's also the president at Powerful Patient, which is a patient advocacy group. And they have made YouTube videos about um, patient advocacy. She's also here to help teach us how to make our easy sew masks and we'll have a Q&A with all of them at the end. So if you have any questions, all of them from folks who are just beginning to folks who are different, making different kinds of masks and donating them to different places, all of them will be able to share sort of their process and how they've approached this project. Because there's been a whole bunch of different ways to do it. So I'm gonna pass off to Hadassah to talk a little bit about what Got Masks Massachusetts has been doing. Thank you, Christiana. Um, and thank you to the Public Library and also to Brooklyn Interactive um, for hosting us today. Um, this, is, this is fantastic. Um, what I've been saying um, when we started Got Mass Brookline Brooklyn about six weeks ago um, is that you don't have to be um, a master sewer in order to make a difference. Um, all you need is to make two masks and that helps one person stay safe and it helps our community stay safe. Um, so since we launched, we have um, don made and donated over 2,200 masks. And we have close to 50 mask makers um, who are working on all different patterns, all different types, all different sizes. Um, for masks, and, and we decided a few weeks ago that we actually 
um, needed to expand outside of Brookline. Um, we fulfilled most of the Brookline requests so far. Um, of course, we're, we're ready for more. So if anybody who is watching still needs masks or if your agency needs masks or if you know of anybody who needs masks, please go to gotmasksma.org um, and you'll see a form to fill out for requests. Um, but because we did so well and our volunteer mask makers are on fire, um, we are able to now expand to other um, other locations. Um, and if you take a look, so that's why we switched from Got Mask Brookline to Got Masks Ma, M-A, dot org. And if you look on our drop down now, we have um, a number of different um, communities throughout the greater Boston area. Um, we just added Tewksbury and we just added Northampton, which is really exciting. We are far and wide, which is awesome. Um, and what it is, is that um, it's basically an online classifieds. So people can post anonymous requests for masks. It can be an individual who just needs two masks in order to take walks and go to the grocery store, all the way up to community organizations or frontline organizations who need a thousand masks and can people help. Um, so this opportunity that we have right now to learn how to make um, a handmade sewn mask um, it's going to come in really handy. And if you feel like this is something that's fun, something that you feel you can do, my daughter here is going to help out. Um, you know, this is great for all ages. Um, if you can make one mask and or one mask, you will help make a difference. Thank you. Thank you so much, Adasa. Um, and I think Joyce is going to start us off. She's prepared like some really awesome slides to kind of walk us through this particular mask um, and the process. So we'll be cutting back and forth between her helpful instruction and then my desk cam to sort of see it in real time. Great. Thank you, Christiana. So I'm going to share some slides with you that I put together. People ask me what's the right size to use. And of course, faces come in all different sizes. So I put together some numbers to try to help you figure out what size you might want to make. And these are average sizes. It kind of reminds me of the, the World Book Encyclopedia when I was a kid. It had this girl named Norma that they said was the normal American girl, the average American girl. Well, I was not Norma. And so I'm very sensitive to the fact that you may need to measure your own face and figure out what size you need. So I have this little method that I use. You cut a strip of paper out of any old piece of scrap paper from your wastebasket and measure yourself in two different directions, the width and the height of the mask. So you measure from ear to ear from the inside of your ear to the inside of the other ear, across your nose so that you're sure to have plenty of room for your nose. And then the other measurement you do is from the top of the bridge of your nose to under your chin, but with your mouth open. So that when you open your mouth, you're not stretching your mask, okay? So those are your two critical measures, the width of the mask and the height of the mask. And you can work from your own measurements or from these average measurements, whatever you want to do, but they, you can make whatever size you want. I made two for some children the other day. Um, they told me one child was eight and one child was three. So I have a smaller size than I make for little kids. And it was too small. And well, that mask wound up going to his teddy bear and we made him a <laughs> So what, you, what we're going to do first is cut one piece of fabric, the width by the two times the height. So if you want a six inch high mask, you're going to cut it 12 inches by the width measure. And then we'll talk more later about the ear loops, but we'll uh, also be cutting ear loops. So here are your standard sizes if you want to jot these down. For a man, I would cut 12 by 18. For a woman, I would cut 11 and a half by 14. And for a child, I would cut 10 and a half by 12. And then nine, eight, seven for the lengths of the straight pieces that you're gonna use. Or if you're gonna use the ear loops, they're already sort of pre-cut. So, um, Christiana, did you wanna 
show us a little bit about that? Um, yeah, absolutely. So I, because of the fabric, piece of fabric I had was so big, I pre-cut before we got started, but I used your measurements. This, I did another mask yesterday and I did it a little bit bigger. So this one, I'm gonna try a little bit smaller. Um, and I went with your sort of recommended uh, woman size um, of the 11 and a half by 14. And I just measured it out with my ruler and marked it out with a Sharpie and then cut it out. I didn't do a super exact job because this is just kind of a quick and easy sewn mask, um, but you could be a little more precise if you wanted. The other nice thing about this is you're gonna end up hiding your like icky hemline on the back inside. So you don't have to see if it's a little bit crooked on the edges. So that I find very nice about this as someone who doesn't always cut in a perfectly straight line or if you don't have sewing scissors to help you do that, that would be good. Right, and notice that the fabric is taller than it is wide. Mm -hmm. All of those measurements are taller than it is wide and the width is that narrower measurement which sounds a little illogical but you'll see it works so if you have a fabric that has a an up and a down to it or a a should be vertical should be horizontal plan it so that the short side is the one that's going to be across your face horizontally right and as an example just i'm going to get ahead of us a little bit but as a preview, what we're going to do is we're going to end up doing this. We're going to yeah. fold that way so you can kind of see why you would want, if there's a direction to your pattern, this right. is going to end up being the wide part because we're going to do a double layer cotton mask. Perfect. Any other questions or comments while we're here? Great. Let me go back to the pictures then and I'll show you. Um, I did somewhat what Christy just showed you. I cut out my fabric. I returned the paper here. Oh, come on, go, go. Come on. Oh, Arc. Uh, little pop up thing maybe telling us up here. Yes. Okay, so I cut out the fabric and I fold it in half just what Janet just showed you. It's the right sides together. If there's a right and a wrong side to your fabric, at this point we want the right sides together and we're gonna sew along the bottom edge of that fabric about a quarter of an inch from the edge of the fabric. And you can sew that with a sewing machine or you can sew that by hand, it doesn't matter. I went ahead and sewed it by hand. And we're going to make a tube at this point. So just make that seam and create a tube. Great. So yeah, so I'm going to fold this up. Um, they call it hamburger style, I think, in, in elementary school. And if I had a nice pretty pattern on this, I would want it to be on the inside here because we're going to end up flipping it inside out after this step as Jordan mentioned. And I'm just going to do, I have my hand sewing needle today. This will go super fast if you have a sewing machine, but it's a little noisy on the camera, so I'm not using that today. Um, and I'm just going to do a really simple running stitch. If you wanted a really nice clean finish, you could look up how to do a back stitch. So it's really tight and perfect, but Today, I'm just going to do a running stitch, and that's kind of what you think of when you think of sewing. So I'm just going to go down into the fabric and pull it back up through and down in and up through. And you're kind of creating little accordion happening. And then I can just pull the needle through and get just this really quick stitch done. Terrific. What I sometimes do is when I come up like that at the end of that row of accordion pleats, I'll just do one little back stitch before I start the next run. And it just makes it a little bit um, tighter and smoother, but it doesn't well, really matter. Anyway, any way you fasten it together is perfectly fine. You see some arms stretching out. Good job here. Mm -hmm. Turn the right thing. No. I think I 
didn't do it right. Are you all seeing my slides or not? I think we are still looking at the table at the moment. Okay, thank you. So, while you all are busy, I will pull up my slides. Great, so here we have the, uh, the seam that you all are working on. And once you've got it together and you've fastened your thread off at the end, make sure it's nice and secure, then we're gonna turn it right side out. So you've created two and we'll turn it right side out. And once you've turned it, then you need to just press it and make it nice and flat. And when you press it, you want the seam to be in the middle of the back side of the mask. And you, if you don't have an iron there, don't worry about it. You can finger, we call it finger pressing. You can just smooth it out with your hands and make it flat. So yeah, so I finished my stitch all the way along the top here, and I'm just going to flip it inside out. And put that seam right in the middle and flatten it out. So our faces are not entirely rectangular, so we need to change the shape of this, the way it's gonna lay across our faces. So what we're gonna do right now is pleat that. And shrink the sides to be more like three inches. So here I've created two pleats. I'm making a children's size mask in my model here. So I'm gonna put two pleats in, but for adult masks, you probably are gonna want three pleats. And what you wanna aim for is to get it about three to three and a half inches on the end. Three max for children, but three and a half is fine for adults. So just pleat it down like that, because you want it to be flat. It's gonna lie against your face, right in front of your ear. And we don't want it to be too bulky at that point. So pleat those down and put some pins or, or um, paper clips or something or other to hold your pleats in place. Great. And so these were my first ever pleats. I've never made pleats before, but it was really simple and easy. So you basically just pinch a little bit below the top and fold with your think catch the part right below it with your finger and fold down and then you'll do that again so you'll pick up the part you just had use your finger to catch that fabric and create a little fold until you have some nice little pleats on the sides and then i'm going to i just did three here and then i'm gonna pin those down with my paper clips And this just allows us, because Joy, like Joyce said, your face is not actually a rectangle. This allows the fabric to stretch out wherever the pleat is to fit over your nose and the shape of your chin so that you get a better seal around the edge because we just stretched, you know, a pillowcase across the, your face and strapped it on. It's not gonna actually fit to the shape of your face. And we're going to do a really nice and easy running stitch again along both of these edges. As Christy is showing you, we're going to just fasten this edge down so that it doesn't come undone. 
and just make a running stitch along the side to hold those pleats in place. Again, about a quarter of an inch from the end. And then we're gonna start talking about ear loops. So while you're doing that, let me talk a little bit about ear loops. Um, I think that some of you have uh, scrunchies or hair ties or something like that. And they need to be a little longer, not just the ponytail kind, but a little bit longer than that. Figure it's going to need to go around your ear and you want it to be comfortable, something that you're going to be willing to wear for at least an hour. The feedback we have from nurses who've been wearing these all day long is that sometimes their ears get sore so you want something to be particularly comfortable. I've used quarter inch elastic. Wider elastic will make your ears sore. Um, a quarter inch is good. Shoelaces, especially the, the flat shoelaces. And I'll, I'll show you one that I made with shoelaces. You can take a slice of a stocking. So if you have an old stocking, your slices should be about an inch and a half. And you can see here, I have taken, this is just a knee high stocking and I sliced off the toe and then <laughs> made a couple of slices here. And that actually does pretty well. So um, it, it's soft and nice on your ear. And the other thing that you can do is do various kinds of ties. Um, you can cut a one and a half inch strip of t-shirt material and it'll kind of curl up to make a tie. So there are lots of choices. So think in terms of Comfort first, that's the main thing, because you, you don't want to get irritated and start fussing with your mask and feeling like you need to take it off. That That's going to be counterproductive. We want you to be comfortable in it. If all you can get is half inch elastic, you can actually split it. It has little ridges and this is blown up so you can see this is really only half inch elastic, but there are three ridges on this side, three ridges on that side. And I took my scissors and I'm cutting up the middle and these ridges will actually guide your scissors. So if you cut gently and slowly, uh, the scissors will not cross those barriers. It'll, it'll do very nicely. And this is the shoelace that I was using. And again, nine for men, eight for women, seven for children. You cut the lengths, cut two lengths. Uh, in this case, I'm using a shoelace and uh, we'll start putting together our ear loops. What are you all using for ear loops? I have a couple of hair ties. They're a little bit of a looser hair tie, so they're not super tiny. So they're a little more flexible. So like kind of a worn out, a slightly worn out hair tie might actually be better <laughs> for this. So it's a little softer on your ears. That's a good thing. Yes. Jewel, you mentioned that you had something that you were using too. I, I think you're muted, hon. Turn your mic on. But she's got uh, scrunchies, I think, that are also softer and larger. Um, You know what? The first time I bought them, I bought the medium ones and, and those kind of hurt your ears. So I use, I just do them my own, you know, they're thicker, but these are the gentle ones. Okay, so okay. they're softer. And you could get like a hundred for four, five dollars or something like that. I ran out of elastic and I had some bias tape stash and I'm done with the bias tape too, so. Yeah. Yeah. By the middle of March, it was almost impossible to get quarter inch elastic or um, also the interfacing. Uh, I, I didn't even bother. I, I just I just opened up my stash and I found this stuff because my mother used to come and just to bring all the elastic and all that. And I opened up one shoe box and I said, wow, I like I had like I had six yards of elastic. It's all gone. But, you know, I know I went to recycle it. I went to order quarter inch elastic and it said you can only get half inch and that it was going to take a month to deliver it. And I thought, oh, what the hey. So I know. Well, well, ordered $85 worth of half inch elastic. It took a month to get here, but meanwhile, I used up all the bias tape I had in the house, all the shoelaces, everything else I could find. Oh, and yeah, I found all these old shoelaces and I washed them. They were the kids, you know? Right. And, um, and then also, there were those elastic shoelaces. Yes. I had a couple of those. Those are, those are really good, too, you know? Yeah. yeah. That's, that's quarter inch elastic. Yeah. Um, 
So we see that, that Christy's ready with her hair ties. So we're gonna put those over the end and fold back that raw edge. So if you if you put the hair tie about a quarter, about a half inch from the end of the of the fabric and then fold back a half inch, that's the casing that we're gonna be making. And we'll fasten that back, but make sure that the hair tie can move freely in that little channel that we've created. And if you have sewing pins, you can actually even do it all in one step and just do one and you're using like your sewing machine that can really just dive through all these layers. You can even just do all of this folding and then run it through once. With hand sewing, it's a little tricky to do it all at once. I did it yesterday. I did just one set of stitches, but it was, it was pretty <laughs> brutal. I wanted to show you how if you're using a shoelace or, or quarter inch elastic, you need to create that loop. With the hair ties, you already have a loop, but here you've got something just straight and flat. So what I did was a simple, again, just a back stitch, and I've just gone over the end of the overlap. It's overlapped about a half an inch, and then I just sewed that little bit. Um, I didn't get too fancy with sewing it together. It will hold pretty nicely. Neither one of those is going to ravel on you. And just in case you need to adjust it, it's better if it's not too wonderfully sewn together, to tell you the truth. So you create that, you loop it around the mask like you saw Christy doing, and then turn back that last half inch and pin it in place or fasten it in place in some in some way so we're making a casing for that loop that will so it'll slide freely in there and at the same time we do want to encase that because now this is going to be the finished end so what i've done is i've i've used a whip stitch you just go down up down up but from the healthy fabric to the tip of what we've turned back and you can see it kind of overcasts that raw edge it'll make it a little bit more secure so that when it goes through the wash it's not going to get all torn up okay how are we doing ladies good yeah so you can see i've fastened mine Mm -hmm. Little hair tie here with some paper clips. I'm starting to stitch in here. Joyce, can you just remind us how long the elastic or hair tie should be for the different sizes, please? Yeah, my estimate is nine inches for men, eight inches for women, and seven inches for children. And I have to tell you, the first time I made one of these, the ear loops were enormous. And so I wound up having to adjust them. But that's one of the reasons that you want it to travel easily through the casing. Because all I did was scoot it around so that I could see the joint. And I undid my little stitches and clipped off almost an inch and a half, I think, and put it back together. And slid it back so that the joined part was inside the casing and it was great. And I will say I was very excited because I was actually able to order quarter inch elastic for the first time in months last a uh, couple days ago on Etsy. <laughs> I found someone with some. Yeah, it's beginning to come out of the woodwork now. I'm very excited. <laughs> it was it was very difficult. It's so really difficult locally because I I had ordered some from some local sewing shops, but I think all of them are out of it now too. <laughs> so another plug for um, Got Masks um, MA is that we have not just um, posts for people requesting masks, but we also have a parts wanted and a parts offered tab. Um, so say you need elastic, so then you can post um, on our site saying looking for elastic 
or say you just received a donation of a hunking spool of elastic and you'd like to offer it, um, which I did. And so I'm offering um, five yards um, for, for people to use for their masks that they're making. So if there are any other um, supplies or materials that you need in order to make masks, you can also hop on our website. Yeah, because I know I hit like, I hit spots where I, I can't, I don't know. I think Joyce and some other folks are able to just sew and sew and sew. And I am a less experienced sewer. So I get kind of worn out after a while, but I'll have, you know, bias tape sitting around. Um, and it's a waste for it not to get used by yeah. folks who have the stamina or have I tend to make them in batches of 10. That seems to be about my attention span. Yeah. <laughs> 10 and I'm done for the night. <laughs> but uh, I can do 10 in about three, three and a half hours. So while she's doing that, remember I mentioned that some people were complaining that the elastic was really too hard on their ears. So especially anybody who's going to need to wear it for a long time, or if they have sensitivities in their ears or something, then um, there is an alternative. You can do it with ties. And I'll show you one that I made with ties. Because it's a little bit different. And what I did was I took one big shoelace. Oh, this pop-up needs to go away. Okay, there. So I took one big shoelace. This is a, a sneaker shoelace. So it's like 40 inches long. And I put it in just the exact same way that we were just doing. This one, I'm, I'm working on a machine for this one. Or you could use that long strip of t-shirt material we were talking about and sew that into the casings. And uh, I closed up the casing. On a machine, you can use a, a zigzag stitch if you have it. Uh, but again, you wanna secure the ends because the ends are gonna get somewhere. That's where the, the what you're doing is gonna travel through that casing. So here's my one long shoelace that I put on there. And it will, you put the, the closed part of the loop behind your neck, put this around your face and then tie the open ends um, behind your head. So, and I can show you that one. And I have here, finished here. up my stitches on the back here. So I took my paper clips off and we are all set. Great. I have a mask. My daughter just said she already made two. Oh, not in this hour. Not in this hour. <laughs> well, still, you already made one. Hey, I Joyce. Did this one yesterday. We yeah. have a question from Facebook. Somebody would like to know what a whip stitch is. If you could oh, explain that a little uh, more. Well, I can show you the picture again, but it's it's basically just a simple stitch where you're going around that raw edge. So from the top of the raw edge to about a quarter of an inch down. Let me see if I can get my picture back up for you. Um, and it it's just because it whips around in a circle, basically. Like a, a twist, like a barber pole, is basically what you're creating. And I always find it really helpful to just even, like a whip stitch is super common. So if you search for it on YouTube, there are like a thousand really nice tutorials on how to do one at one time. There's a, there's the whip stitch going. So here I'm going down, up, down, up, down, up. So it, it's just real easy. And it kind of circles around that edge, that raw edge, right? So you're going, you're going perpendicular to your original stitches. Right, and you're essentially binding that raw edge. There's a fancier one you can do if, you, if you're really into it. You can use a buttonhole stitch or a blanket stitch or something, but whip stitch is the simple one, so, and that will do the job. And we always like to plug um, one of our favorite online resources at the library is called Creative Bud, and they also have some really wonderful sewing and embroidery tutorials that will have different stitches like that. 
So if you live in Brookline, everyone has access to Creative Bug, which is a website that's full of these really beautiful, professionally made craft tutorial videos led by different crafters, um, professional crafters across the country, and they're really wonderful and we can't recommend them enough. They're super great. So I think we were all gonna, do we all wanna show off? How, how far along are we doing? Does everyone have either a mask they made during this session or at another point that they could show off for folks? Sure. And I'm modeling the one with the one long shoelace. So you can see that it ties behind the head. Nice, Priscilla. I like it. And you're using ties also, right? Yeah, so she's got essentially four ends that she's tying in behind her head. Uh, nice. We have another question on Facebook. Yep. Somebody wants to know, um, what was the name of the creative website? Oh yeah, absolutely. So that's called Creative Bug. Um, and the easiest way to get to the login for that is at brklib.com slash creative bug. So I'm sure Will will be able to link to that in the chat. It's super great. It's also on our website under the e-resources section. Great. And the other thing that we made actually, Joyce, you mentioned sort of that ear fatigue problem. Um, and if you already have a mask that has um, ear loop straps and it's kind of uncomfortable for you, we actually did another craft song a few weeks ago. Um, myself and Tiffany, one of the other librarians, made crochet and knit ear savers they're called so we did a crochet one and a knit one and they're basically just a tiny little crocheted or knit rectangle with buttons sewn on so you can convert these elastic straps into an elastic back of the head loop great so it hooks it hooks around the back of your neck and that takes kind of the pressure off the backs of your ears but also means you don't have to tie anything which I know can be kind of difficult to do backwards and sideways. Yes. <laughs> and I know, Joyce, you said that you had gotten a lot of questions sort of about um, how to wash the masks. Were you going to give us a demo today or did you just want to talk about it? Yeah, go ahead. You talk for another one minute and give me time to go set up. Yeah, absolutely. So Joyce is going to take us over to her sink and show us sort of the process for how you maintain these masks. Um, and again, um, we're just using cotton. So that could be anything that you, any like leftover quilting cotton is great. That's what this is. It's from another like costume that I made for Halloween one year. Um, but you could also be using a t-shirt um, and cutting a square out of that. That's, I think, really nice because it has like, the soft feel of the t-shirt. It's much more comfortable than some of the quilting fabrics. But what um, I know there's been a bunch of different solutions to doing that. Anything that you can like upcycle into things um, has been really great. So um, kind of breaking through those old stashes. Of... I think we're, we're ready if you can swap to my other camera. Great. OK, so we're going to join Joyce over by the sink, I think.
Oh, awesome. Oh, I think we're looking at your, your Listerine. <laughs> Hopefully, my water soap. I can too much noise. But you can see I'm walking just like I would wash my hands. Just soak it up. And you need to do this for 20 seconds. And you got to soak up because this coronavirus is going to soak. So soap is enough to kill it. But we do need to do it for 20 seconds. And then rinse it out. And hang it to dry. Any convenient spot for that is great day. And I just hang it on a hook to my bathroom. Awesome. That's like so quick and easy. That's really nice. <laughs> Yeah, and Joyce, could you just um, repeat the question? Could you repeat sort of that process? Your mic was just a little funky oh, with sorry. the running water. <laughs> sorry about that. Yeah, so you wash it basically just like you would wash your hands. So I just took the mask and rubbed the soap into it and played with it for about 20 seconds. You just squish it with, with your soapy water and then rinse it out and hang it up to dry. That's, That's all there is to it because the, the coronavirus is sensitive to soap. So soap will be enough to kill it. You don't have to go to great lengths to use antiseptic or anything. Soap will do it. Awesome. So I think we wanted to sort of wrap up with just sort of an FAQ session. If there are specific questions from folks online who are watching, we're happy to take those. Otherwise, I have some questions for folks and I'd love to hear just from our panel of people here today, sort of their experiences, um, any kind of challenges that they faced in getting um, in going through this project and how they've worked around them. Um, so I don't know, do we, do we have a volunteer to sort of get us started about like how they've been, have um, you all, we've heard a little bit from Joyce and Hadassah, but um, Jewel and Priscilla and um, folks and Kathy, have you been distributing your masks through um, Got Masks MA? Um, or have you been donating to your your friends or some local organizations? I will happily start. Awesome. So I had a major workaround, but I really decided I really wanted to try a go at making masks. And I was talking to Hadassah and I really love dabbling and learning to use my sewing machine but I really wasn't comfortable cutting patterns. It wasn't something I knew how to do. And Hadassah then said to me, you know, it's funny. I actually love sitting there with my cutting board with my uh, rotary cutter and cutting the fabric. So we've become sort somewhat of a team. It's been fabulous and I would only say that the way that Hadassah has mentioned in Got Masks, people are said, oh my God, I have nothing but um, elastic. In all of these communities, you learn that people have different skills and different strengths. And so it's been amazing that the finished product has actually happened and I can't actually believe that I've been involved in being able to create it. We've been working on masks, cutting very cutting a pattern that Hadassah is comfortable cutting. And then as Joyce mentioned, sewing straps and they're extremely comfortable to wear so there's no irritation you just tie the straps and it's been these have been fantastic so i am i applaud hadassah for making this community uh possible and here's just one it's a priscilla creation Oh, I love the fishies. Yeah. Oops. Sit down. There we go. That's so 
awesome. Yeah, Jewel, how did you sort of, what, where have you been working? Have okay, you been um, through Gamas as well? For those of you who, uh, I go to, I practically live at 4A Coffee, so this is some fabric that had Express on it, so I made masks for the owners, and uh, yeah, I'll just have on today. And so then I, people would see the mask and they would ask me and I would make two for them and some people would have paid me. I said, no, no, it's okay. And um, then my friends started asking me and um, so my friends started asking me and they, they said they brought out their sewing machine, which they haven't touched for about 30 years and they couldn't figure it out the pleats. So one of my friends just had a birthday. So I sent her about, I sent her six masks, two for her husband and four for her. You know, and um, I was trying to get rid of my quilting stash and couldn't get out of the house. And um, one of the things I find with the quilting fabric, because it's thicker, it holds better. And so many people were looking through their stash and said, my fabric's too thin and all that. So I just got it. I, I just gave them to friends. And, and I gave it to a lot, a lot of people here in Brookline. Uh, some, people, some of my friends from the senior center, we've been doing some uh, social distancing. So every time there's social distancing, I come. Um, we had six people last time, so I made six masks. Everybody got one, and everybody got everybody got one of these um, Mickey masks last time. Uh -huh. So I um, I don't know because I, I look at uh, Hadas I mean the mask website and I said I can't do ten, but you know I I've been giving them to to people around Brookline like um, people in businesses. I said hey you guys you want a mask? You said I like your mask. I said hey you want one? I said okay. So I show up the next day with two masks. That's okay. awesome. Perfect. And Kathy, I know you've been, you said you've been hand sewing a bunch of masks, right? You don't have a machine at home. So you've been doing. Me, Kathy? This Kathy? <laughs> oh, we have two Kathy's now. Oh, good. Go, Kathy Lahar. You go. Oh, Kathy. No, 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 Kathy. Is it me? You want yes. Me? Um, I do the kind in the back, and I make the kind that has a little pocket in the front. So the inner lining is like a pocket. So people who, who like to use filters can stuff the mask with the pockets. And I put a little uh, paper clip. I sewed it in with, now I learned the new term, uh, what was that, that stitch? Uh, your, your, your stitch, what was it called? Okay. Um, <laughs> the whip stitch. The whip stitch, yes. When I, before I turn it right side out. Uh-huh. It's basically, It looks Very like good. this. Yeah, for people who may not be familiar with them, um, it's useful to have something over the bridge of your nose that allows yeah. you to bend it to the right shape for your nose so that you don't have gaps between the mask and your face. And you yeah. can do that with, a, as you say, a paper oh. clip. Do it with I, cleaner. Cleaner. I can't show it because I. I, I first just put the paper clip, I, I stretched out a paper clip and cut it in half. And then I laid it across the thing, bent it a little bit to the curve. And then I whip stitched the thing on. Yeah. And then, then uh, when I turned it, did the turning inside out, I think the techie term is top stitch. Um, yes. I stitched on top to to inst I stitched all the way around. I am not very good at showing this. Um, I stitched it all the way around with the uh, wait around the wire. Uh, well, all around the edge. That that yeah. instead of ironing, I just top stitched. Okay, very and, good. And. Uh, and uh, Basically, yeah, I'm um, not very good at explaining this, but I think you did. And fun. Kathy, you mentioned you put you did leave a pocket 
for a filter, it looks like we have a couple questions from folks on Facebook yeah. about um, whether or not our filter is necessary. What do you use for a filter? Um, okay. Would it be possible to sort of adapt the hand sewn mask we did today to include a filter? I know, yeah. Joyce, you've done a lot of research into sort of material options yeah. and filter options. I yeah. Well, the, the simple way to do a, f a filter pocket is when in making the mask we did today, instead of sewing all the way across that long seam, you sew it sort of a third of the way across and then skip a third and sew a third. Uh, so you have an opening there in the middle. Yeah. And you can tuck something in there if you wanted to. It, is it necessary? I don't think it is. Uh, and. I think the thing you have to be careful about is what are you putting there in front of your nose to be inhaled into your lungs? So, you know, a plain Kleenex might be okay. Even paper towels give me pause because they put, you know, air freshener kind of things into them so they smell good in your kitchen. And do you really want to have that in your lungs? So I, I think I have I have a lot of misgivings about filtering. The CDC recommendations is two layers of cloth, and that's sufficient to do the job for most people. For our healthcare workers, it's not enough, but for ordinary people who are doing social distancing, it is enough. So I don't think you need to go to any great lengths. I think the other thing I'm concerned about with filters is that they are not reusable. So unless you throw them away, they can become counterproductive, okay? You okay. need to have it clean and fresh and a new one all the time. I do not like vacuum cleaner bags. Some of those actually have glass particles in them. So be very, very careful about what you put in there. But the, the important part is two layers of cloth. Yeah. And um, I, I uh, heard that if you wanted to, you could, if you want to do a throwaway thing, you can use coffee filters, because that's safe, right? Yeah. And or the other thing is, if you have any old uh, pure wool socks, you boil wash them, and then they turn dense, like uh, like Healthy. felt. It's called and that felting. As well. Yeah, that's a and good idea. And it's wool, and that's that's okay. You can use I a personally little don't flannel. use them. Uh, yeah, you, I've seen people use a little bit of flannel, which would be fine to breathe through. Mm -hmm. Felted wool would be fine to breathe through. Um, and I agree with you, coffee filters are the ones I'm least concerned about. But I really have big yeah. problems with paper towels and with uh, vacuum cleaner bags. Yeah. And at the end of the day, I think sort of the takeaway that for the majority of folks who are making their own homemade masks, um, if unless you're a healthcare worker, you know, they're, they're not gonna be in 95s, so they're not gonna be the same effectiveness of um, as surgical masks. Um, right. So the, the goal is to have some level of protection and to prevent droplet spread through those layers of cotton but that sort of heavy filtration gets really complicated really fast in terms of breathability yeah. as well. Um, so if it's if you are putting extra layers in, you know, you could keep adding layers of cotton as well, but and that might filter better. But the more layers you add, it becomes harder to breathe, and that's yeah. going to cause one other problem with you being able to breathe. And yeah. also, um, if you're uncomfortable and you're having trouble breathing, you're more likely to be messing with the mask and be things near your eyes and things like that anyway. Um, yeah. So at this point, you know, um, we were mostly making just the two layer cut masks because that's what the CDC yeah. is recommending at this point for most right. people. Let yeah. me just add one point because so uh, my, my Rotary Club had a presentation from the Brookline police the other day and one of the things they wanted everybody in Brookline to know is that some people are excluded from the requirement to wear a mask, especially people with asthma or other serious breathing problems, uh, because even the two layer mask can be a problem for those folks. So if you see someone who's not wearing a mask, don't go up and confront them. 
it's not worth it. According to law, some people are exempted and the police are not even allowed to ask if the person has a medical condition that exempts them. So best not to get into that confrontation. Just trust your neighbors and keep your distance. Good advice. Um, we do have um, someone ask if there, if there was another video of a, a mask that does have a filter. And the original uh, video that we did a number, a couple months ago, one of our first craft longs was doing a machine sewn cotton mask. And that one does have a pocket for a filter material um, or like a surgical mask that could get inserted on the inside if um, you have folks who are just trying to sort of extend the life of those surgical masks. Um, some, some folks were interested in them for that purpose. So we do have a video on that's linked on the library website to a pattern for that as well. Great. Great. And we just have a couple of minutes left. Were there any other sort of takeaways that any of y'all um, sort of didn't, don't think we got a chance to mention or advice that you wish you would have had when you first got started um, as some of the beginners? Well, I'm glad to see how many people are interested in making masks and undertaking to do them, even with uh, small levels of skill. It doesn't doesn't take a lot of skill to make one of these. And I think it's wonderful that you're trying and that you're protecting yourself and your neighbors and your family. That's all very important these days. Can I ask one last sort of important question? Sure. Joyce, you're clearly the expert. <laughs> and you are part of Brookline Bees. Is there a way to get expert specific questions for you as people go along and take the journey of dabbling in mask making? Sure. You can write to Brookline Beehive at uh, gmail.com. Brookline and Beehive be at gmail.com. Be Brookline Beehive, singular beehive. Yes. Fantastic. Well, you are fantastic. Uh, you're Oh, thank you. Yeah. So it's been great to be able to help out. And I think particularly in the beginning when so many of the hospitals and out did not have masks, we were scrambling and, and really making a lot. And as I say, this fabric shop in Washington State has made a quarter of a million masks with their team. Obviously, it's not all one group, but uh, a large extended team to help out the hospitals there. At this point, most of the hospitals are getting the PPE, but not all. So listen for calls around you. Uh, nursing homes, places like that still need them. Um, Got Masks, Massachusetts is doing a wonderful job trying to get everybody outfitted, but the need is still there. My quilting group is now making for a hospital in an Indian reservation in Arizona which is painfully short on masks and being hard to hit. Absolutely. And again, that's uh, got masks, M A. Uh, is that dot uh, com or dot, was that dot com, Hadassah? Dot org. Dot uh, org. Dot org. Awesome. And we'll link that in the video description as well. So y'all can head over there. Um, so you know where to go if you need a mask and aren't able to sew it yourself or if you get really industrious and make a few of these uh, cotton easy sew masks. That would be awesome. Thank you again to each one of you all for joining me today. To Joyce and Kathy and Priscilla and Jewel and Hadassah um, for joining me to make masks. Um, it's been super great to have you all. We'll be back again next week with another Idea Space Craft Along. We'll be doing, on a completely different note, a couple of our youth services librarians are gonna show us how to make fairy houses, which is gonna be awesome. And again, thank you to Brookline Interactive Group, who helps us stream all of these programs, both online and on public access television, on channel three. 
Um, it's been super great to work with them each week and they've been so helpful in getting this awesome team set up and talking to each other. Uh, thanks so much and have a great night. Thank you. Good night.